I have done two vlogs since my uh, since the last vlog that I uh, uploaded, and um, like a fucking idiot, I've uh, on for the first one. I think I had the uh, microphone. I switched it off in my pocket accidentally as I was putting it back in. And then last week the microphone was recording, but the uh, GoPro somehow I don't know how it happened, but it just took two sequential shots. But I'm more annoyed about the uh, footage from last week because um, if you maybe seen on the news uh, that there was a possible mini tornado that happened uh, somewhere I think in uh, Surrey or was it in Hampshire anyway. But uh, as I was riding uh, it started getting really windy and on this road where all the trees were, they were moving like hell. and. Um, Oh great, I got a fucking... Uh, well, luckily it's not like uh, American cargo trains where you just gotta wait like... We are hit five miles of Union Pacific to go past you. Oh, that was quick and painless. While I was riding through the um, this road, suddenly there was a, a branch that came, it just cracked off and uh, it fell right down maybe five, ten meters in front of me. I mean, I wasn't going that fast. It wasn't the, it wasn't the road graph, Nottingham class branch, but... Uh, it was uh, enough that if I'd uh, hit the front wheel it hit it, I would have probably slipped over it. So, anyway, we'll never find that out. But when I got home, yeah, there's, uh, in, uh, in Finnish there's an expression. Uh, basically, I got home and I was like, Kyllä vitutta, kyllä vitutta. So, yeah, something pretty random as well happened to me uh, last week as I was coming back from the walking back from the station to come back home. Um, I mean, consider that this is, I'm within, you know, zones one to three in London, so that's like, I don't know, maybe five, five miles from the center of London, uh, what is this, maybe eight, eight kilometers from the center of London. Now I was walking back from the station. I had a wild badger that appeared from the bushes and then uh, started walking alongside me on the pavement for like a, a good five minutes. So, crazy shit does happen. It wasn't the honey badger though. I've been fucking killed. There's a similar problem in uh, Helsinki, in uh, Finland's capital, that uh, I think in the 70, late 70s or the 80s, at least that's what uh, that's how the uh, the folklore goes about it. Wild rabbits started appearing in, in the town center in Helsinki and uh, kept on uh, growing in numbers because, you know, rabbits breed as they do, that's their job. People started noticing that their numbers were growing. Um, I mean, like, serious amounts, I mean, to the point where they were chewing through, like, trees and plants. I don't think they've hit the electricity cables yet, but um, I'm sure they'll get there. I mean, look at this, just... I mean, I don't know if it comes on the cameras it's coming to you, but, I mean, this is why you just gotta love English countryside. Got, like, a church over there. I think Gothic, slightly Gothic-style church. And uh, then you've got the North Downs in front of you. Well, this is... I don't think... This is, would this be... Probably it would be part of the North Downs. Um, or maybe it could be a hill in front of it. Oh, no, 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 yeah, this is North Downs, my mistake. Ah, dog, there you go again. Classic. And then you got the farmland as well, on top of that, you know, it has that... I'd call it sort of like a, um, it's not like a, like a fully wild countryside, it's sort of like a tendered English garden, I and mean, you can see why, or where Tolkien got his inspiration for Lord of the Rings, I mean, the Shire, I mean, even the name Shire is, uh, like, you know, the, the, uh, what's the word for it, the, uh, suffix that goes usually on the counties like Lincolnshire, Shropshire, you know, all those ones. Anyway, so the so the rabbits, I mean, now they're getting to a point where they are becoming a pest. I mean, they're not, 
I don't believe that uh, actually even from there, I think what happened was is that someone's had a pet rabbit and they've just let it loose and slowly they've grown in numbers. But there is, I mean, I have to say there is debate. Some people say that they are not a problem. And uh, others say, yeah, they are a pest. I mean, those are the people who've got, who've had trees or plants eaten away, all that kind of shit. Now look at this, matching outfit. The city council has ha actually had to put in a hunting quota for the, um, well, look, we're in Switzerland. A hunting quota for the rabbits. And I think, I think originally they were hunting them with, uh, with guns and bows and arrows. I mean, of course, the guns, you can't do it in the middle of Kaskofuisto, which is Central Park in Helsinki. Um, but in certain areas, um, I think in certain less populated areas of the city, they're allowed to use guns. And then in other parts they use like, I think it's a bit like a sort of a bone arrow type thing. But again, that's a problem. I mean, you don't have somebody impaled. But I'd say that it's reasonably, um, it's reasonably <laughs> humane or whatever the word is. I mean, I know there are people out there who are going to say it's, it's completely unnecessary, unnecessary to kill animals like that. But um, I mean, they aren't a native species there, and they can cause an imbalance into the um, into local ecosystem if the if the population is not properly controlled. And they're not thrown in the bin or anything. The, the hunters then take their uh, the rabbits that they've killed to the Korkasari Zoo, uh, which is just on a small island, like uh, just off off the off the uh, coast of Helsinki. And they're then fed to the lions and the other carnivorous animals. I think they get like five, seven euros per rabbit that they've killed. So it all works, you know, great circle of life and stuff. Have to find out if Rafiki would approve. But I see them as well, I mean, I've seen rabbits everywhere in Helsinki when I sometimes go skiing if there's enough snow in, inside the, inside uh, Kaskosvoisto, in what's the central park which kind of runs down the middle of the Helsinki Peninsula. Is um, while I've been cross country skiing, it's cross country skiing, so not not bloody slalom, you can't do that, it's impossible. So, yeah, while skiing through the park, I I sometimes can see maybe 10, 20 in one day, and even the footprints are everywhere as well. And the fuckers also then shit everywhere onto the ski tracks, and uh, because the ski tracks are made in there, they sort of rutted into the ground with a machine. Is that the little rabbit shit when it gets embedded? into the ski track it's like a because it has a pretty high coefficient of friction it's like a it's like a piece of like a piece of sandpaper and when you go over it you suddenly get like a it sort of gets drops up against the ski wax on the bottom of the ski and then like slows you down i mean i've nearly gone overboard once going over a whole bunch a whole bunch of uh, reindeer shit not rabbit shit <laughs> yes now and that reminds me of another story in um when I was uh, again cross-country skiing uh, in Lapland, and uh, this is all the way north of the Arctic Circle, you have these cross-country skiing crazies who do it their whole life. I mean, all the way until you know, even the day they die, they're still skiing in winter. So you have these 80, 80, 90 year old uh, grandmas who are just bombing down the bloody ski tracks at you know the speed of sound. I had gone out uh, one day, and uh, this is also. I knew it was the same day that I learned that never have boiled eggs before going and doing any kind of heavy exercise. I had two boiled eggs with uh, soldiers in the morning thinking that would last me the whole day. And usually when I go out there I start on the first day, I try and do maybe five kilometers and then build it up, ten kilometers, fifteen kilometers and then by the end of the week or I hope that I'm getting somewhere towards uh, maybe 25, 20, 25 kilometers on a day trip around the trails. So on this particular day with the egg, I was going for the uh, 20, 25 kilometer run. And um, so I thought I'd fill myself up with a bit of fuel. Anyway, as I got halfway through, I'd, uh, yeah, I'd been pacing myself, but I came to a long climb going up maybe about 300 meters. And uh, the other problem was is that it started off quite cold in the morning and um, I put uh, ski wax on the bottom of my skis which gives the um, the grip 
when you kick forward so that you don't slide back and you have like wax for different kind of temperatures I mean honestly I don't give too much of a fuck about the ski wax but you've got to try and put some on in certain temperatures I'm no fanatic when it comes to ski wax I mean some people even bring like clothes irons to apply it on and put it get it to the right temperature so that it's properly evenly applied onto the body it's a bit like surf wax where you put it on the um, top of the surfboard so that you, your foot grips onto it so same principle but just on the underside of it to grip, grip the snow as you kick forward so I hadn't applied the uh, ski wax properly to the right temperature because it got like from slightly in the plus degrees then the zero degree wax then to minus one to minus five then you got like a bit further down as well so what started happening was I was I wasn't able to kick forward up on the hill so I was using like ten times more energy than I should be using and of course it ended up me being like the uh, fat kid on the cross country run that uh, I started wanting to I, doing the thing at the end well halfway through where you want to fucking heave completely I mean I was I would say I was like dry heaving to the point you know when you go to a country and you've drunk the water from the tap where well, you're not meant to be drinking it from the tap and oh boy <laughs> bad memories so while I was doing the little dry heaving routine halfway up the hill because the egg just hadn't sat right on me and um, so that's where I learned no more no more boiled egg before I start stick to something simple so anyway while I was there on the uh, on the side of the ski track trying to regain some kind of decorum in the distance there's this I see this sort of like snow billowing around this object coming down as I see closer and closer it's uh, it's one of these mumos it's sorry uh, it's one of these grandmas and uh, she's coming down at properly quite a clip I mean at the kind of speed that you'd probably have to go for a, some kind of hip replacement if you if you if you came off bear in mind that uh, on cross-country skis they're completely different to downhill skis I mean they're like twigs in comparison so you can't uh, you can't use the edge to brake as hard as you can on uh, on downhill skis anyway so the lady's going down practically you know breaking the sound barrier you know there's like a, a whoomp noise as she goes past and I'm sprayed with snow anyway so a few hours later I got to this uh, got to this kind of little kota which is like a, it looks like kind of like a teepee and you have these dotted around on the cross-country tracks and they've got like a fire on the inside and you go take a break sit down warm up a bit maybe cook a sausage on the uh, on the fire in there or in the case of this uh, this uh, grand old dame she uh, burst in through the door walks in and then says per kelikorum poron pasquayalarulla which is basically fucking hell there's bloody reindeer shit all over the ski tracks so after she's burst in and then um, complained about the uh, reindeer shit the little reindeer shit balls I mean they're sort of like uh, they're sort of, they're not really Malteser size, I mean they're, let's say maybe half, half the diameter of a Malteser. It doesn't taste the same, I can tell you that. She then comes in and then sits down, there's about two or three of us already sitting in there around the fire. Sits down and then uh, out of her pocket takes out a little hip flask, takes a swig and then passes it around. Yeah, and after that everyone, so after the swigs everyone took a swig and uh, the hip flask went back to her and then off she went yeah so those are the kinds of people that you find uh, north of the arctic circle slightly the bolt loose in the head not in a bad way <laughs>